With shopping experiences, you can create content pages such as shop pages, landing pages, listing pages and product pages. In this video, I will show you how to create a product page and what you need to know. Each product has its own product page on which all information about this product can be found and on which the product can be placed in the shopping basket. Some blocks such as the product description or the buy box, including the product image gallery, are already available as standard. However, the page can also be designed completely by yourself. So once you have decided on a type, um, in our case, it would be the product page, you just click on the product page button and then you can use a layout with a sidebar or alternatively the full page uh, yeah, width. The sidebar can be used to display the category navigation filters or both. During later editing, you can add further sections. These may differ from the layout type that was initially chosen. So once you have decided on a type, you can select how the section of the layout is to be constructed. First, you have to type in a name of the layout and then click on create layout. This is the central editing area and this is used for editing your layout. On the right side um, is the menu bar, which you can use to call up the individual functions for editing. These are divided into the areas settings, blocks, navigation, and layout assignment. Depending on whether you have clicked on a specific block or the entire section, you can access the block settings or the section settings. Using the layout assignment, you can set which category or landing page the layout will be assigned to. But the assignment can also be found in the settings of the respective category. On the left side, you have the different sections. So using the plus button down here in the editor, you have the option to add another section. Choose between sidebar and full width. So this section does not have to use the same structure as the already existing section. Using the icons at the top bar um, of the screen, you can switch between the individual viewports and thus see how the layout is displayed in the different views. Um, you can also switch to the list view of the existing elements to fill the content of the elements more quickly without having to open each element individually. I will now go through the menu bar on the right and I will start with the settings. In the settings, you can change the layout name. You can enter CSS classes. You could also change the layout type, but this is not possible with product pages. And you've got the preview entity. So if you want to, you could just select the product and yeah, let this uh, be displayed in the preview of the product page. In the menu item blocks, various predefined blocks are available, grouped according to categories, uh, which you can select using the drop-down menu. So the blocks consist um, of one or more elements that can be individually filled with content. So we've got the categories yeah, favorites, uh, text, images, video, text and images, commerce, sidebar or form. This is the block category text. So you have different text layouts uh, from which you can choose. The same uh, goes for images, videos and so on. You can drag and drop items into the editor and place them in the desired position. So you could just choose this one and drag it into the second section you have previously um, created.
created. So this is our first block in our second section. If you are to adjust the content of an element within a block, so you just move the mouse um, over the element in the preview. So this will display two symbols in the upper right corner of the element. Um, the gear symbol opens a new window where you can define the content of the element. Um, and if you use the symbol with the arrows, um, you can change the element, for example, a text element with an image. So you just swap the uh, blocks then. At this point, I would just like to say, um, if you want to learn more about the individual blocks and their possibilities, you can go to our documentation. Um, there is a written overview of each individual element. Um, just showing it here in this video would be, or would go beyond the scope of this video. Now I'll come to the block settings. To open the block settings, just click on a block, like I've just did here or there, um, and then click on the block setting icons just below this uh, plus button here, and then you'll get to the block settings. Um, the basic settings for the currently section or uh, located block are entered here, so you could um, enter a name, uh, you can choose a background color, um, so to achieve uniform coloring you can also specify the color using the hexadecimal value. Um, then we've got the background image, so instead of a background color you can use your own background image. Um, we've got the image mode, um, if you have created a background image you can choose here, whether you uh, whether whether it should fill the block or whether it, the image should be aligned to the block, and um, then under the layout point you can enter CSS classes, um, yeah, and edit the margin here, um, and you've got the visibility, so you can also decide whether this is visible for mobile, tablet or desktop. Then we've got the same settings for the sections. Um, to open the section setting, just click on a section beforehand and then you directly get to the section settings instead of the block settings. Um, yeah, here you can also enter the basic settings for the currently selected section, so this one, the second one. Um, just start, or if you want to, you can give the section a name, you can enter the CSS classes, you can choose bes uh, between the sizing mode, either box content or full width. Um, also, you can choose a background color, a background image, and yeah, also the um, image mode can be edited. Then we've also got the visibility section here, so again you can choose whether the visibility for some specific devices are enabled or disabled. Next we've got the navigator. The navigator shows you an overview of all blocks by their name. So this is our first section here, this one, and our second one. Um, you can change the order of the blocks by drag and drop. Um, and with the plus symbol you can create a copy of the block below, just like this. Um, and with the trash can symbol, obviously, you can remove the block again. And last but not least, we've got the layout assignment. Um, there are various ways of using a shopping experience in the storefront. So with the layout assignment in the menu on the right, um, yeah, you can assign layouts or this layout to categories or products, for example. Oh, not, not category, obviously products. Um, I'll just choose my test product 
so it will appear down here if you would choose more obviously there would be more down here in the overview then click on apply and it automatically saved the page and the assignment so um, this is the easiest way to assign the page to a product um, when you are still in the editor if you don't want to do it here you can assign product pages um, which were created in the shopping experience to products by or using the product itself so just open the respective product in the admin and open the layout tab so that that's the point where you can then select your layout and last but not least i would like to tell you something about the error handling um, if you are unable to save your shopping experience, you will be informed directly in the designer that an error has occurred. In the designer, you will receive a precise error message about which element of your shopping experience is wrong and at which point um, the error occurs. In this way, you can quickly correct wrong settings without having to search for the error. Just for example, in our product page, if I just delete our section with the standard um, thing, you will directly receive a message that there is a element missing and that you are unable to save this um, shopping experiences because we need the buy box the product description and reviews and the cross-selling element in this product page.